Hi, I'm Danny Dyer, and this is the Real Football Factories. Rewind, it's me, BMZ. Dobra Dan from Belgrade in Serbia. Today I'm excited because today I'm going to the Partizan Belgrade and Red Star Belgrade stadiums. People ask me, why have you come to Serbia? Now, apart from exploring the great cities and sampling the great Serbian lager and the great Serbian food, people who know me know I'm obsessed with football. And Serbia has always been on my radar. Especially the two Belgrade clubs, Partizan and Red Star, the eternal derby. One of the biggest derbies in the world, if not the biggest. Now, unfortunately, I'm here at the moment with the time of coronavirus, which is a shame because I really, really love to watch a game, and especially the eternal derby. The flares, the fans, the singing, the atmosphere, everything about it just looks absolute quality. But as I'm here in Belgrade, I can't see a match. But the next best thing I can do is go to the stadiums and have a look around. Okay, let's visit the first stadium now, the Rako Mitic Stadium, home of Deleji, Red Star Belgrade Football Club. There you go, Rako Mitic. You got the Serbia flag on that side of the stadium there. And moving over here, you've got the Red Star flag. Okay, I'm just walking around the ground and you can see graffiti on the walls there. Lots of graffiti all over the stadium walls. All different pieces, all the way round. And over here you've got two massive tanks. Very impressive. This one's adjourned with the Red Star flag. And next to these tanks, you've got a monument here with a flag. Okay, I'm joined by two football fans here. I've got with me Luca and Philip. These gentlemen have been kind enough to tell me what the Eternal Derby is like, and I want them to share it with you, their experiences. So, how many times have you been to the Derby? Uh, well, I've been twice. I've been yeah? twice to the Derby. It's a completely different experience like it is, uh, let's say, in London. I've been to also many football matches in London because I used to live there. But here, I mean, it's a different level. Yeah. I mean, you're always standing on your feet, you're singing songs. I mean, I mean you also never know if you're going to make it out alive, to be honest. And there's always <laughs> wow. police around stopping you. I mean, you have to be quite careful, but, yeah, you know, yeah. it's very, it's very, it's on a different level. Yeah, yeah. It gets a lot uh, of emotions involved with the players and both the people cheering, so you gotta be careful, as my friend said, and there's a bunch of police around, it's crazy, but it's also a unique experience, so it, it's like partying on a different level and then you get to see good football as well, so yeah. it's a pretty good experience. Yeah, I mean, look, looking at the pictures, it looks insane to yeah, me with yeah. the, uh, the pyrotechnics, that's one thing that I've noticed over here, you're allowed pyrotechnics in the ground, where in England you're not, yeah. but that adds to the atmosphere, I think, I mean, it just looks absolutely electric, and yeah, I'd yeah. say with the, the fans yes. going crazy, yeah. So, you'd recommend anybody to, to come and check out this derby? I would, I would definitely recommend, definitely, because yeah. it's, a, it's a different experience. It, yeah. I mean, it's not like any normal football match. Yeah. It's yeah. Not, I mean, and if you don't like it, you just don't come to it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, you, have to, you have to be careful, you have to be careful. Yeah, That's yeah. Like, as okay. long as you're careful, careful I mean, you're going to yeah. have a lot of fun, so yeah. why yeah. not just check yeah. it out? A lot of drinking on that day, a lot of beer, well, beer drinking, yeah. yeah. Drink. I mean, many football fans, they like to drink before a match. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, there are no rules. Yeah. There are literally no rules. Yeah. No, no drinking in the stadium, though? Uh, no. No, okay. There's no drinking in the stadium. Yeah, because that obviously that would heighten things. It yeah, might go yeah, more, yeah. even more crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Yeah. Except if you hide it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. I really oh, appreciate yeah, that. You. That's great. And uh, all the best to you. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, mate.
Okay guys, here I'm in the stadium. I can't tell you how lucky I am to get in here. Obviously because of coronavirus, the place is locked up. I met an ex-player who was a very nice gentleman and he showed me to the museum and he said you can actually come through the museum and have a little look. Well, the guy actually working the museum was very kind enough to let me in as well. So, feel very privileged, really grateful. So, so thank you very much, Red Star. Really appreciate that. Yeah, the stadium holds 55,000 people, but back in the day, when there was no seats, it held 110,000 people. So it's christened the Maracana Stadium. Absolute quality stadium. I can imagine this stadium is absolutely rocking on match day. Definitely need to come to a game here. Okay guys, I'm inside the Red Star Belgrade Museum right now. The entrance fee is 200 dinars, which is $2. That's really good value. I've been told to actually tour around the stadium, go in the changing room, see everything. It would be 2,000 dinars. That's about $20. Again, that's great value. I just want to show you a little bit around the actual museum. As you can see, there's a lot of cups around here. In the middle, you've got the European Cup, which Red Star won in 1991. They won on penalties against Marseille and Bari. They had a great team with the likes of Panchev, Prozanetsky, Savicevic. I'll just pan round and you can actually see the photo here. I don't know if you can make that out, but that's the cup winning team over there. The guy on reception called Petula, very helpful indeed. He's been telling me about all the history of the club. I can say lots of history. Got all the photos here, games gone by. Yeah, for 200 dinars, $2, it's definitely worth a look. Just gonna move over to this section now. See on the walls some shirts with signatures. That's from 1991. All on the wall here, you can see clubs that have actually played. I can see Rangers at the top. I can see Zenit from Russia. Over there, I can see Olympiakos from Greece and Tottenham. Benfica, Bruges, Fiorentina, Milan, Celtic. The list goes on and on. Very cool to see. Moving over to this wall here, you've got a picture again of the 1991 European Cup winning side. Also, as well as first team trophies, there's youth team trophies as well. Lots of old photos. It's a very historical club. And here we've got more pennants from more teams that have visited. I can see Arsenal up there. You've got Sparta Prague. And moving over here, you've got Liverpool. They lost that game 2-0 that night. Okay, I was just shown by the guide here. Uh, the guy who actually brought me in was an ex-player and his name's Carousey. And he was a midfielder. There he is. He's a midfielder like I used to play. And this was in 1971. So big thanks to Carousey. Such a lovely gentleman. And he was very kind to show me to the museum. And also big thanks to Petula who showed me around as well. An absolute pleasure to meet them both. Real top gentlemen, thank you. Okay, that was the Red Star Belgrade Stadium, the Rakomitic Stadium. Now I'm off to the Partizan Belgrade Stadium, which is literally a 10 minute walk from the Red Star ground. It's really crazy that you've got two bitter rivals that close to each other. 
Here you've got some training pitches right next to the stadium. Yeah, stadium's over here. The Partizan Stadium. Also known by the Grubbery fans as the Temple of Football. Okay, I've made my way inside the stadium now. Here I've got a better angle of the training complex. Over here I've been told you've got graffiti and that means the kids of Partizan. I wish the players were out training today. That would have been good to see. Maybe another time. Right, I'm just walking on the outskirts around the actual stadium and you can see all around it there's graffiti. Just walk around and show you more. So much. Love these trainers, proper old school, the Adidas Gazelle. I had a pair of these myself. It says on the wall, made for standing, not for running. Now this piece here, this is Grobbery from Bukova in Croatia. Okay, looking outside the ground, you've got CSK Moscow graffiti, Partizan Belgrade are brothers with CSK Moscow. So if they were playing over here in this country, a different Serbian team, then Partizan would join up with CSK Moscow for a few beers and take in the match. Okay, that's BDF there, that stands for Brain Damage Firm. This here is Grobbery Montenegro. This piece here is Grobbery of Sarajevo. Yeah, all these pieces I'm seeing all around the stadium, they're all from different Grobbery groups from different countries and different cities. Very cool and interesting to see. Okay, here we have tribute to a fan that was killed in battle. Uh, this is Demi Jukic, who was 18 years of age. An absolute tragedy, a waste of life. Such a young age. Moving over here, we have the emblem of half partisan and half the city of Belgrade. And also here we have another fan who tragically lost his life. His name is Salafantic and he was 30 years of age. Again, such a tragic loss of life. Here you see the Partizan Belgrade flag on the steps. There's two flags here. Just making my way to up inside the stadium now. And here you have it, the Partizan Stadium, the Temple of Football.
Okay, this is a tribute here to a gentleman who unfortunately also lost his life at the age of 20. He was part of a group called Zabanyi in Grubbery and he was killed by a group in Grubbery called Alcatraz. Absolutely tragic. His name within the Grubbery is a reminder to not let this happen again. Okay, I'm really excited as I'm pitch side right now. Just pan round. And as you can see on the stand over there, it says Partizan. I'd love to get my boots out and play on this pitch. Superb. I can just imagine 40,000 fans screaming at this stadium. Absolutely epic to be here pitch side. Okay, here's another player on the wall. This looks very similar to the artwork I've seen in Dorchel. This is Mucha Bukovic. Here you've got another piece of graffiti about the brotherhood of CSK Moscow and Partizan Belgrade. This is the basketball championship winning team from 92 in Istanbul. They were European champions and next to them you've got a fan here who is a massive Partizan Belgrade fan. He had Partizan in his heart. His name is Misha Tumbus. Much celebrated. This is an ex-player called Drago Mansa. He's an absolute legend of Partizan Belgrade. Tragically he died at the age of 22 in a car crash in the 1980s. But yeah, he's a very, very big, revered player here. He's absolutely adored by the Partizan fans. Okay, so at the ground also you've got the date of which Partizan Belgrade were formed there, 1945. And moving swiftly over, here we've got the legendary 1966 team, who were the European Cup final contenders. They nearly lost to Real Madrid 2-1. But yeah, absolute legends right here. Okay, that concludes the Paisan Stadium tour. I just want to say a big thanks to the Grubbery for showing me around the stadium, giving me pitch side access, and sharing their history and knowledge of the club. Really, really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm making our way back to Belgrade City Centre now. I just want to sign off by saying a few things. Serbia is a very proud footballing nation. The love for football here reminds me very much of the passion that we've got in England. I've been in bars, cafes, restaurants and everybody's like, who do you support? Who's your team? Who do you follow? I absolutely love this because I'm obsessed with football. Football for me is the number one sport in the world. It brings people together. Obviously it's a hard time at the moment with coronavirus as fans aren't allowed into the stadiums. But coronavirus won't last forever. And when we all get back in the stadiums, it's going to be amazing. Because football without fans, in my opinion, is nothing. The fans make football the beautiful game it is. I look forward to seeing Serbian teams in Europe, in England in the future. And I wish all the Serbian teams all the very best from England. If you like what you've seen today, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and also leave a comment in the comment section. It's always good to connect with people. From Belgrade, Serbia, this is Bermsey signing out. Javeli.